Welcome back. So as you can see, uh, inside when we are doing development, you'll see that we are creating behind the scenes to kind of do the development part. Angular is creating some files for us and that's the ones that I showed you last lesson that we downloaded to kind of use these files. But what if we actually do a build? What's the difference between the basic files that we have right here and an actual build? Well, let's have a look. If we go in here and do an ng build and I'll add the minus minus prod for production, pretty much just meaning that I'm going to use the environment variable right here, the prod variable, and I'm going to try and execute that. Now what this will do for me is it'll create a destination folder and put a build version of my application that's ready to deploy to a web server. I've used this on Firebase in other videos previous, you can go and check those out, but now my focus is going to be what actual files you get and what's the value of these files compared to these development files that we're working with. So let's try and actually look in the code where we're actually setting up the destination for this build version right here. So if I scroll up right here, you'll see there's actually under the AngularJSON, if you go under um, build right here, there it is, build, you'll actually see output path right here. Now you might have something like this in the new versions where it says the name of the app right here. So app name of some kind right here. I didn't want that, so I just removed it to kind of just store everything directly inside the disk folder. My build is now done and you'll see these files look different than the ones that we have right now in the browser. I'll talk about that in a second, but let's see what they actually provided for me. So here's the disk folder, and if I expand that guy, you'll see there's a lot of different files in here. Now, you'll notice that the index.html file is pretty much the same that you've seen all the time, because this is kind of the file that launches your application, takes care of getting started with the Angular part, and actually runs this guy, the, the very first thing to get started, when everything is ready, it runs this JavaScript file called runtime, and that's the JavaScript file you have right here. Now notice, it's impossible to read this file, not impossible, but very hard to read it, because it's not built for human readability, it's actually compressed as much as humanly possible uh, to kind of make this as fast a download as possible. That makes sense, right? So this is not, again, this is not very easy to read, but it's more for production, right? Where if again, look, we look at the files over here, you'll see these files are actually still kind of readable, these are the ones from the development environment. You can see I can still read this and get most of this code right here. There's a lot of spaces, a lot of um, big uh, wordings right here, like get, own, property, description. That might be a T, only just a letter inside the compressed version to kind of limit the size of your application. So here we have one of the files. That's the one that triggers everything, starting from the index file. Another file we have is the styles file right here, which is, of course, my styling, again, compressed as much as possible, almost impossible to read. And then we have a polyfills, which is, as I remember it, the third part libraries. And then we have the actual main, which is my code, again, compressed as much as possible. And that's actually what we have to get up and running with an application like this. So notice again, another thing with these files right here, you'll see instead of just being main.js, like we have here, it's main.js, it's actually renamed to main and then some kind of hash value or something like that, some kind of numeric um, value that is unique, right? The idea with this is that a browser is intelligent and says, if we already have main.js, I don't want to go and get it again on the server. I'll just use the local one. And that would mean that if you didn't put in this timestamp or whatever it is right here, it would actually end up just getting the same main.js even though you might have uploaded a new one. So the cool thing here is that every time I do a build, I'll get four new completely unique files and they will all be pulled down again even though I'm refreshing my application after a change. Uh, it won't say, oh, I already have main.js so I don't need to go and get it again. It'll say, I don't have the new main.js dot blah, 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 blah. Right, so that's why it'll go and get the file again. So there's a lot of things going on right here just with the builds. Now you'll notice one more thing and that is I have one huge main file right here and that's what modules can do for us. We can take this big main file and we can kind of split it into chunks so people don't have to go and get everything up front. They can start getting parts of your application and only get the information that you need. Again, meeting, uh, meaning that we have a, a smaller footprint for the load of the application inside your browser, meaning that we can execute faster with the first page that the user should be presented. So that's it for this lesson. Now you kind of know what the build actually does for you and how these files provided inside a build compared to a development environment are kind of very different. And it's very important that you understand that because of course you should not push these files directly to a server. You should do a build, end up with files like this 
and then they are the files that will be pushed to the server. And also you'll notice that automatically Webpack also takes care of actually creating the right uh, route for your runtime and then this uh, tag right here, it also the same for the style, it automatically put those in there. So this is not something I'm doing myself, this is something the runtime takes care of uh, for me. So there's a lot of things going on when you do a build but you have to kind of do a build to make sure that your browser has unique files so it can actually say, oh, something new has shown up, let me go and grab it, and also to compress everything so that instead of having large files, you'll have as compressed files as possible. That's it for this lesson. Next lesson, let's start by looking at what modules actually are. See you next time, have fun.